G'day folks and welcome to the aquaponics area of our backyard farm. Today's clip I think is a fairly important one for you folks out there who run um, media beds, whether they're filtered or not, as it's got to do with their suspected solids buildup. I covered it briefly in my last aquaponics video, but today we're getting down and dirty and cleaning out these grow beds behind me here. Now, the reason I think we've got a solids buildup hasn't got anything to do with murky, muddy water in the sump tank or fish tank. It's actually looking very clean and very clear. It's got more to do with the rise in the pH um, steadily over the last month or so. So um, I'll explain all that as I'm cleaning out the barrels behind me here. First of all though, what I do need to do is harvest these warrigal greens just to get them out of the way because the plants need to come out of the barrels and then we'll hook into the mucky job and I'll um, yeah give you an explanation as we go. So we're just down here at the sum tank and this line here that comes down feeds all the grow beds. So it goes down here, straight line, there's a T that goes off there and goes up to the satellite bed just up there in the middle of the system next to Lizzie. The line then flows through to this section here where it is teed off again and it goes to the bed just above us here and the other two beds over uh, next to the walkway. Now from there it goes on a straight line all the way to the end of the barrel beds and that's where I think I'm having a problem. Basically it's the path of least resistance for the solids to travel all the way through there and up into that end bed. So I'm fairly sure if I pull out the media from that bed there and investigate further, I'm going to find a load of solids down the base of that barrel. So the first thing I want to do is um, remove this bell siphon. I actually want to um, bring the water level up in the grow bed. So what I'm doing is just putting in a small section of pipe. It's at a length that even if the water starts to come over the top of it here, it won't um, breach the side of these barrels. Basically, I'm, I'm trying to flood them as high as I can with enough, uh, enough water. So when we get the media out, um, I can give the dirty stuff down the bottom a good swish around and yeah, just try and get all the solids off it. And then that water will um, go elsewhere out into the patch. Just quickly too, you might notice that this bed here is filling up a lot faster than the rest. And even though they're level, the reason is um, this one here had a large amount of root coming out the drain fitting when I took it off for a look the other day. The water is only slowly coming through to these other grow beds, which is another reason I think this bed here in particular may be um, home to a lot of solids. So the water is slowly coming up and this one here, yeah, ever so slowly. I think we might have enough water in there as it is, so we might just um, leave it at that. I'll turn this off. So I think I might just pull these plants out. Well, this one doesn't have a too big a root system. Just pop her in as is. I dare say this Owen knock is going to have a bit of a root system to it. Yeah, look at that. There's a lot of muck and gunk mixed in with the roots here as well. And just quickly for you folks who um, are interested, we do have compost worms in all our beds as well. And no, they don't look after all the solids that are in the grow beds, but that's for another clip. Just to show you, all the clay balls will be going into this barrel. It's an old composting barrel. It's got holes all drilled around the base of it. So that'll let any water drain out. And I'll be just using this little um, net basket to um, scoop all the clay out. So I'm also pulling out any root sections as I see them. So the processes behind uncontrolled denitrification is something that was explained to me years ago by Mr. Paul Van. Thank you, mate. I um, very much appreciate it. It's, it's something I, I won't pretend to know the actual chemical equations for, but it is something that I'm fairly certain is happening in this system here, and it's been driven by organic solids accumulating in the grow beds. Now, these organic solids have bacteria in them, which are pretty much what drive the whole aquaponic system as it is. These bacteria require oxygen. Normally, they get their oxygen from the dissolved oxygen in the water itself, but due to the anoxic or anaerobic zones where large quantities of sludge um, accumulate, they can't get it from the water. What they tend to do is get it from the next best thing, and that's nitrate, which is basically a nitrogen atom surrounded by three oxygen atoms. So the bacteria will come and rob oxygen off that, gives you nitrite, and then again, and this uh, molecule will join with other nitrogen and elf gas out of the system, and there's other byproducts as well. One of those byproducts is increased alkalinity in the water of your system as a whole. That then drives the pH up, 
And that's pretty much all um, what raised the red flag for me to let me know I had a bit of a solids build up in the system. So here you go, folks. This is pretty much all what I'm left with now. It's um, extremely murky water. As you can see, there's a lot of um, solids in there suspended in the water itself. So unfortunately, cleaning it out this way does mean that I don't get to see like a pile of solids in one clump, but it does help me clean out the clay so I'm not having to double handle it and hit it with the hose and make a big mess. So there we go. Now what I need to do is just move these um, plants out of this bed here, just over into this grow bed where I've made a bit of space over here. So the clay from these two barrels isn't going to fit into this one here. So I've grabbed another compost uh, barrel with some holes in the side and my fingerling basket and I'll use them to store as much clay as I can. A bit hard for you to see, you might be able to see the muck coming up from the bottom when I disturb it. Um, I was thinking about letting it settle overnight, but I think I'll pretty much will um, just drain it all out now. It does look though that the, um, the first two barrels are the worst offenders. This one not so much, but this one here, there's just plumes of muck coming up when I um, dis dislodge the bottom, when I wipe my hand over the bottom. So yeah, I, I am hoping that the whole problem with the buildup of muck is happening in these barrels here. So anyway, so I'm just going to unscrew this standpipe and put the bell over the top of it. It'll hopefully create a siphon and suck the rest out. So yeah, that siphon's initiated and the hose itself is just running down through here and then down over my collection of pots and bits and pieces behind a half finished chook house and onto a grow bed full or wicking bed full of warrigal greens and um, a sacred basil. So once this empties, it'll give us a better idea um, of what's on the base. Oh, and I also need to hop down there and um, clean out the drain underneath again, make sure it's all nice and clean. In the siphon barrel, there's not a great deal of solids. I mean, there are a few, but I would have expected less, seeing as this system isn't that old, or these beds. The middle one has got a, um, noticeably more solids. You can probably make out the solids line, the water's there, and there's the solids. And this end one is pretty much well chockers. So it's coming up almost to the, the little bumps on the feet. So, yeah, that's a good, probably a good centimetre, sorry, probably a good centimetre deep of just the fine solids that have come out of the water. So a lot of them would have also gone out when I um, drained it from down below there out to the grow bed. So now all that's left to do is to um, undo this drain fitting underneath. I'll do that now. So there you go, folks. That's the colour of the um, material coming out of this bottom drain. And it does have a different odour to it. So I'll pull that away from myself. We're just going to pour this underneath the mango tree here. So that's how thick and syrupy it is. I'm just going to hit this with the hose, give it a bit of a washout. You might want to move Lizzie. So there we go folks, the barrels are all sorted and nice and clean, have a drain fitting to go in there and the media is right to go back in but we might leave it till tomorrow because someone down there would like to go for a walk, wouldn't you Lizzie? You want to go for a walk? Okay, well we'll come back tomorrow morning and I'll set up the barrels and we'll pick it up from there. So it's the next day and we're ready to finish off this little bit of maintenance. One thing I have found though, it is hard to put the pipe work, this thing here, into these barrels without any weight um, pushing back down against them. The rubber sleeve is just a little bit too tight around these bits of pipe fitting. So what I'm going to do is top up the media beds with their media, um, then we'll attach the pipe work. So it shouldn't take me much longer. So now, I should be right if I've lined these barrels up to put these guys on. Put these two in first. There we go. And now, if I can find my screwdriver, here we go. So now it's just a matter of tightening up the clamps. 
and then connecting the water back to the first barrel and we're back in action. I'm just going to put my little bit of um, stormwater pipe under here like I normally do. What that does is it just allows me to see the water level as it comes up. Not only that, it gives me somewhere where I can dose in the iron and the um, seaweed directly into the bed and make sure it gets all mixed well, together well. And we can pretty much all fire up now. So I've learned a couple of things from this whole exercise. Not only do I need to pay better attention to my solids filtration, but also too, um, with any sort of grow bed where you have the drain work covered up, it is a good idea to make it quick and easy to be able to service, service that bit of drain work. The roots in this end bed here, um, just seeing them the other day growing down into the pipework underneath, uh, they could have quite easily clogged up the whole pipework if I hadn't inspected it and I could have had water overflow uh, from this grow bed here and I could have basically pumped my sump dry. I have seen um, some people complain about certain siphons that are set up underneath the grow beds. Um, similar things have happened, they've become blocked and the grow beds have overflowed. So for these beds from now on, I won't be planting any long-term crops. Uh, the sort of things that will be going in here, um, I'm actually going to um, go out and buy some seedlings, some beetroot seedlings, and they'll go in these N2 barrels. Nice, quick, fast crop that doesn't have a massive root system that will eventually clog a drain. Uh, there's no way I'd grow a tomato in something like this. That's just another bit of a lesson I've learned. So it's been three days since I cleaned out those barrels. We're still seeing fairly high pH in the system. So I thought I'd show you my strategy for um, trying to work out where exactly we're having a bit of an issue with solids building up. We're still sitting up around about 7.3. Um, it actually has jumped up to 7.4 as well and then it comes down to 3 so it's right on the cusp there of the high 7.3 so definitely um, something's still going on in the system as far as I'm concerned what my strategy is now is to go around grow bed by grow bed um, and work out if there is a large deposit of solids in them I've done the one over the top of the um, sump tank and I think it's fairly good and I've also done the far one over the back there. I think the culprit is either this one here with the Kangkong, which I pulled out earlier. Um, the root mass is fairly substantial with that, and it also had a lot of solids uh, collected around the roots itself. Um, I've got a bit of a head cold, so I could smell something funky, but I, yeah, I'm no good judge of smells at the moment, so I don't know if that was um, really bad. I've kept it one side for um, Bianca to have a sniff on when she gets home. Just over here we have a bed that ha also has a fairly well established plants in here. We have some celery just down in here and I've grown them before and they get a notoriously large root mass. And I also have a load of the Chinese celtus there. And from the look of how they've grown in the soil, they're fairly substantial as well. So what could be happening is those roots could be creating anoxic or anaerobic zones of their own and um, little pockets of denitrification happening all through the system for all I know. Uh, just quickly, this Kangkong over here is another suspect and I've noticed uh, this morning it looks like it's got evidence of mites on it so I might pull it out as well, but not before I take a few cuttings of some of the, uh, the younger branches down there, pop them in water and that will be this year's Kangkong crop. So yeah, the um, hunt is still on for where the um, issue is but I am glad I cleaned out those barrels because they definitely had an aroma to them and I think they could have been causing part of the issue. So I do hope that this clip has helped you folks out who may have been searching online or on YouTube as to you know why the pH is rising in your aquaponics system. For me, I definitely think it is the solids there. While you're here, um, you can check out that little playlist up there. It's full of aquaponic DIYs and just clips on little aspects of aquaponics that may help you out, including a few small system builds. And you might as well subscribe while you're here as well. And then you can come along and say g'day whenever I upload another clip here to YouTube. I need to thank a number of people, just quickly, um, the awesome folks over on Patreon. Thank you very much for your continued support. Also to, to our super contributors, our super patrons. We've had a new one jump on board over here in Australia. 
um, aqua gardening. They're a Brisbane based aquaponic and hydroponic store. So check out their goods through their link in the description down below there. Uh, also too, the aquaponics grow different shirt and the grower man t-shirt, the red one I've been wearing lately. I wore my new blue one yesterday. Um, I need to thank Chris uh, from Root and Ramble for coming up with those awesome designs. The link to her website is in the de uh, description down below. Um, check them out if you are interested. By the way, I don't get a cent for um, wearing these shirts or recommending them on the clips at all. I just think that um, Chris is a fantastic artist and you know, it's a small company in the permaculture aquaponics sort of niche industry. And I do like to support, you know, people who I think are doing a good thing. So there you go. I will leave it there. I do hope you're all well and happy and that you have enjoyed the clip and maybe gotten something out of it. And I will catch you next time. Cheers all, have a top one. So this little plant here, it's a little bit too big to pop through the um, little pipe section. So what I'm going to do with her is put her in this mason jar with some water and she can go up to the house. It's just got fresh tap water in there. And um, yeah, we'll pick bits of leafy green off her for the next couple of days. Give her something to munch on with the egg sandwiches.